Well, good morning. Well, hi. Pull your hat down over your ears and sit down over there. We'll see about your shorthand first, and we'll try on some typing. What? You're not making a very good first impression. And Mr. McClure wants nothing but the best. Now, what's your name? McClure. The Mr. McClure that wants nothing but the best. Uh, really? How do you do? My, my uh, how did you get in here, anyway? The building superintendent let me in. When I told him I was Susan Powers, sent here a draw request for Miss Luke's secretarial service. Miss Luke was specifically informed by me that I wanted nothing but male secretaries. And that is specifically what Miss Luke informed me. Therefore, I shall take applications and samples of work only from mail. Oh, you will, will you? Of course, if you don't want my assistance in interviewing and evaluating the possibilities of all the applicants, please feel free to say so. There probably won't be more than 15 or 20 of them, and you look rugged enough to handle the situation if they should start fighting each other over the job. Oh, no, I, I only meant... Uh, please stay, by all means. It, well, it's just that I didn't realize the full extent of Miss Luke's service. There's no extra charge. Um, is there anyone in my office? No, but don't get any ideas just because we're alone. I'm pretty strong. Now look here, Miss P... Uh, never mind. I had some time on my hands, so I fixed things. Yes, so I see. Thanks very much. Not at all. I like a neat office. And I think you're wise in hiring a male secretary, too. You do? You bet I do. It proves that you're settled and mature, and have disposed of all those silly qualities which women so foolishly think make a man. Things like youth and vigor. That's so. Of course, the girls hanging around Miss Luke's looking for a job think that a man who wants a male secretary is an old fuddy-duddy. Sad, or he's having wife trouble. I guess lots of men have wife trouble on account of their secretaries. As a matter of fact, Miss Powers, it wasn't exactly my... And I am not married. You're fortunate and very wise. Will there be anything else for the moment, Mr. McClure? Uh, no. No, I, I don't believe so. You know, taken as a group, women are more trouble than they're worth. Especially working girls, they're really awful. They are, huh? Definitely. They get a job with a single and good-looking boss like you. Right away, they start out making passes. They even work their heads off trying to help their boss make a success of his business. So what happens when they try to quit? The boss has to marry them in order to make them stick around. It's a dirty trick. Yeah. Yes, but I, I don't see what... Then there's the kind of woman who doesn't have to toil. They're usually the most poisonous of the breed. They think just because they have nothing to do, a man should be doing it with them. They're always butting into a man's business and telling him what to do. And if a man doesn't do it, they pow, whine, ha. Miss Powell. Miss Powell. Do you know Marsha Clark? I've heard of her, but I've been too busy with the bees to get acquainted with birds like her. With your permission, I will close the door so I will not be interrupted when you're interviewing applicants. You have my permission, Mr. McClure. Thank you. Yes, Mr. McClure? When Mr. and Mrs. Chandler arrive, please let me know at once. They're very important to me. Oh, they've been here and gone. Good. What? Miss Powers, I, I didn't hear you correctly, did I? I think you did from the look on your face. What do they say? When are they coming back? Oh, they won't be back. Well, they have to come back. Chessie Chandler wants a divorce. Not now, she doesn't. What, what do you mean she just... She just uh, this is one ball and chain that dizzy female is going to wear until death takes her apart. Her husband found out how to handle Chessie Chandler. 
Right here in this office, too. He's such a nice man. Smart, too. Smart enough to take advice. Advice? Whose advice? Fine. My goodness, Mr. McClure, you mustn't carry on so. I'm sure you would have done the same thing if you'd been here. I... I... Oh, no. 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 Oh, why, you should have seen that poor man, sitting right there where you are, with his love for that woman oozing out all over, and her standing right here where I am, cutting him to ribbons with that mean, sarcastic tongue of hers. Well, I could only stand so much of that, and when the cork popped, I let her have it. You what? I told her off, and then I turned around and told Mr. Chandler what he ought to do. You... you told Mr. Chandler? I told him that if I were he and were married to that, I'd turn her over my knees and wear the wool gabardine suit right off the top of her nylon slip. Oh, he, he, he didn't. You should have seen it. I'll bet if he takes her out tonight, she'll want to do a lot of dancing instead of sit around and sip cocktails. But... did he... She I loved mean... every whack. Finally threw herself into her husband's arms and vowed eternal allegiance. They left together, very happy. Thank you. Miss Powers, will you step into my office? There's something I would like to tell you. Certainly. Won't you sit down, Miss Powers? Sure. Sometimes confession is good for the soul. Miss mm. Powers, I am going to marry Marsha Clark. Oh, that's awful. I... Uh, why do you say that? Never mind, Skip it. When does it happen? That is the point. It can't happen until I make some outstanding success. Marsha's father, J.P. Clark, demands that. Why? Who does J.P. think he is? Well, he just happens to be J.P. Clark of Clark, Rummel and Bronson, the most important legal firm in the States. Naturally, when Marsha and I marry, eventually the firm will become Clark, Rummel, Bronson and McClure. This is a horrible state of affairs. So horrible about it. This. You marry this Marsha and get to be a partner in a law firm. Gradually, old age causes the senior members to get thought off the totem pole, so you eventually become top man. But you still don't know whether you're a good lawyer or just a good wife picker. The point I am trying to make is that unless I do something outstanding and quick, I might not even get to marry Miss Clark. Mm, a catastrophe, huh? What? Oh, skip it. You were saying? Well, you can't expect her to wait forever, you know. In fact, it was her impatience that made her talk to Chessie Chandler. Talked her into letting me handle her latest divorce. Chessie Chandler's a friend of Miss Clark's. Some friend. Well, probably not anymore. You've no doubt ruined that, too. You realize, of course, that you have spoiled my immediate plans. Would you want a right to success and fame on the wreck of a poor man's love? Well, of course. Uh, love did not exist, at least on Chessie's side, until you started throwing free advice around. Free? Yes, and that advice, I might add, cost me a beautiful retainer. So I need it very much. Do you understand what I'm driving at? Sure. You're apparently trying to convince me that you'd do anything for money, but I don't believe you. You don't understand. I could have made a reputation for myself getting Chessie her divorce, besides a lot of money. The strange part of this business is that reconciliations don't pay off one way or the other. That's exactly the attitude Mr. Chandler took until I turned around and shoved him in a corner and explained the facts of life no. to him. He saw the light immediately, especially when I offered to give Jesse some advice. So he left his check for $2,000. Well, that's something at least. There's more. If you keep LaFair Chandler under your hat, Mr. Chandler says he'll fetch over all his legal business. But no publicity, not one smidgen. Yeah, but... Tired of clicking through the commercials? Watch Commercial Free on Patreon. The link is below this video in the description box. And now back to the show. Hello? Oh, one moment, please. For you, Miss Clark, Mr. McClure. You, you idiot! 
I've just been on the phone with Chessie. She's not going to get a divorce. She loves Chester again, and she loves you immensely, just as I do. You've spoiled everything. But, Marcia... You don't even love me anymore. And I hate you, too. And you get that red-headed hussy out of your office right this minute. Now, wait a minute, darling. If, if Miss Jenkins had have been here, this never would have happened. Miss Jenkins never would have dreamed doing what Miss Powers did. But you insisted I fire Miss Jenkins, remember? You didn't trust her alone with me. Now, Hart, there is right to be trouble. Shut up. Not, not you, darling. I, I was talking to someone else. Well, that's better. I don't like a man to tell me to shut up. So she's still there, even after she's ruined everything for us. Now, now, let's calm down, dear. Uh, things really aren't as bad as they seem. Well... I suppose I could get the newspapers to play up the reconciliation story. Uh, you was chief for Chessie. Nothing like that's been ever done before. Oh, oh no, no, no publicity. No, uh, not one smidgen. Uh, if there's any publicity, Mr. Chandler won't retain me to handle his legal business. But you don't want his legal business. Papa doesn't like Mr. Chandler. And he wouldn't let you bring the Chandler account into the firm. I don't care what your father likes. Don't you realize that with a Chandler account, I don't need you? Hello? Hello? Did the operator cut you off? No. She hung up. This must be your lucky day. It's probably the first of the unemployed. I'll go and give him the word. Miss Luke, secretarial service. Miss Luke speaking. Miss Luke, uh, this is Thomas McClure, to whom you have been instructed to send some male applicants for secretarial work. Oh, yes, Mr. McClure. <laughs> I want to warn you that I'm going to try to hire away your assistant, even if I have to pay double the salary you're paying her. I don't want a male secretary. I want Miss Powers. What's Miss Powers doing there? You sent her to help me interview applicants, didn't you? Why, I did not. What? As a matter of fact, Mr. McClure, I had quite a time with Miss Powers. I told her that if she went near your office, I'd see she was blacklisted. Oh, I don't understand. I think you should know that that Miss Jenkins, whom you discharged, is Miss Powers' roommate. And Miss Powers swore she'd get you for discharging Miss Jenkins, because Miss Jenkins has a husband still in Devon's hospital. She has? Yes, she has. Uh, did Miss Powers tell you I sent her there to help you? Well, she most certainly... Uh, well, well uh, as a matter of fact, uh, no. Uh, the fact is, Mr. McClure, Miss Powers is a very fine legal secretary, but much, much too imaginative. She got her last employer into trouble, you know. Oh? Yes. She got him involved in a slander suit with a client of his, a United States senator. She told the senator that his dome was bigger than the one on the Capitol building and needed repairing just as badly. If she's caused you any trouble, I'll naturally back up any action you may take. Thank you, Miss Luca. This has been very interesting. I... Forget what I said about male secretaries. Keep them coming. Mr. John H.Q.P. Sullivan McGee. Here and after to be known as the party of the first... Yes, sir? To John H.Q.P. Sullivan McGee, he here and after to be known as the party of the first... Yes, dear. Do you think, Mr. Ferguson, that such nomenclature has any place in a legal brief? Well, well, you see, I thought that when you Just said... Just a minute, Miss Powell. I don't think Mr. Ferguson realized when I stepped in here and you said... Exactly. That puts him at the head of the class. Had he been one of those so-called wise young men, he would have thought I was addressing you. Which you and I both know, of course, I was not. No, sir, Mr. Ferguson had his mind on his business and thought I was still dictating, which I was. He's not a conclusion jumper, like some men I know. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ferguson. We'll let you know in the morning, definitely. Oh, thank you. I hope I hear from you. Well... Hmm. I'm sorry, I... What's the matter with your arm, Mr. Ferguson? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, 
I'm well, proud I'll tell of you. Sir, when you're finished with Mr. Ferguson. Will you come into my office? Certainly. I do indeed know what you sound like. You sound like a dumb woodpecker working on a hard knot with the wrong side of its head, and that sort of talk doesn't scare me a trifle. Nothing of it. I, I was just coming in so you could dictate the letter. Uh, the letter? Yes, the letter for our client, Mr. Ferguson. Miss Powers, Mr. Ferguson is a prospective employee, not a client. Well, he was a prospective employee, but now that he's become a client and is going to get all that money, he's going to go back to college and do some postgraduate work instead. Do you realize what 25% of $5,000 is, Mr. McClure? $1,250. But just where is Mr. Ferguson? Oh, no, that's our share. Mr. Ferguson gets all the rest. And we only get the 25% because that's the contingent fee that I agreed upon. And just how are we going to earn this fee? By writing a letter, which you will now dictate to me. What? What letter? Didn't you notice that Mr. Ferguson couldn't pick up his hat with his right hand? Yes, but I don't see what... So, the reason Mr. Ferguson cannot pick up his hat with his right hand is that he was practically shoved off a moving streetcar by an impatient conductor. Then a blue cab hit him on the first bounce. It was awful. And all they offered in the way of settlement was a hundred dollars. Well, he is a very lucky man. Miss... Miss Powell, do you realize who represents the transit cab companies? Clark, Rummel, and Bronson. And if you think I'm going to fight them for Mr. Ferguson, you're crazier than I assumed you to be. But the fight's all over, really. That's what I've been trying to tell you. All we have to do is write Clark, Rummel, and Bronson a letter stating that we will accept $5,000 on behalf of our client instead of filing suit. Miss Powers, you didn't find... Well, you looked sort of upset when you left Mr. Ferguson and me, so I didn't want to disturb you. Disturb me? So I just found over there and... Wait. You weren't talking to Mr. Clark when you made reference to a certain dumb woodpecker? Were you, Miss Powers? The old dodo himself. And he makes me sick. Do you know what he tried to tell me? He tried to tell me that we couldn't prove in court that Mr. Ferguson's injuries weren't of a prior nature. Ha! That's probably right. Oh, but of course, you could. You could prove it on the telephone. You're darn right I could. Do you know where Mr. Ferguson was on the way home from when he had that accident? Well, what's that got to do with it? He was on his way home from patching his physical examination for pilot training in the Air Force. And I don't think the Air Force would have accepted Mr. Ferguson if he couldn't even pick up his hat. Even old J.P. knew better than that. And what did old J.P. think about it? What was his attitude? Oh, his attitude was normal for his caliber of being brain. He said you'd regret this to your dying day. Miss Powers, what did you say? I hope you didn't... No, I didn't. I was quite proud of my restraint, really. I simply told him that I hoped his suspenders would break when he was pleading before the Supreme Court. Miss Powers, are you quite satisfied with this day? Perfectly. I, I feel very content. Good. Now then you're in the proper frame of mind to take a letter? Certainly. That's what I came in here for, remember? Hmm. Won't you sit down? Ready now? Mr. J.P. Clark. Clark oh, uh... Clark been a slight mistake. This letter is not to uh, Mr. Clark. But I told you, he's the uh, one... This letter is to Miss Susan Powers. What? Uh, P-O-W-E-R-S. It's capital P. Got that? Yes. Fine. Now, let's see. Uh, uh, yes. <coughs> My dear Miss Powers, I am a man of few words, as you may or may not have discovered in our brief acquaintanceship. Therefore, I shall come to the point. I have learned that you came here for the purpose of throwing a monkey wrench into my machinery.
because I fired your roommate, Miss Jenkins. Now that you have accomplished your mission, you are contented. And well you might be, for your triumph is complete. You have won for me the enmity of one of the most influential men at the bar, a man whose daughter I hoped to marry and whose firm I had hoped one day to be a fourth member. Uh, you accomplished this by effecting a reconciliation between two people on the brink of divorce and by making a veritable fool out of Mr. Clark in the case of the transit cabs uh, versus Mr. Ferguson. However, against this I, I must admit you did collect some three thousand odd dollars in fees. But what is of the greatest consequence is that you are the cause of my breaking off my engagement to a spoiled brat and making it thank heaven so that I never can become her stuffy father's partner. Thus, saving my self-respect and opening a bright new future for me. In lasting gratitude, therefore, I wish to advise you, Miss, Miss Powers, that this office will never have a male secretary as long as you are willing and able to grace its premises with your charm and your intelligence. Got that, Miss Powers? Miss Powers? Susan? Susan? What's the idea of walking out of me? I couldn't bear to hear all of it. And I wanted to spare you. Spare me? What? I didn't want you to have to fire me. So I quit. Oh, without telling me, huh? Yes. Think you're pretty smart, don't you? Hmm. I'll say you aren't. For once you're wrong. I had no intention of firing you. Yes. What made you come back anyway? I don't know. I... You certainly didn't do it on my account, did you? Yes, I did. You did? Yes. Though I haven't the slightest idea why I even ever thought that you... Darling. Well, now that that's settled, you're fine. Do it again. Oh, darling. Darling, you're wonderful. I, I couldn't possibly do without you. But you just said that I was... Well, after all, you don't expect a promising young attorney to have his wife working as a secretary for him, do you? Oh, darling. Oh, darling. <laughs> Show you how much I love you? I'll even let you pick the new secretary. I already have. Hmm? I tell Miss Jenkins to report back to work in the morning. You... Um, what's the... Thank you.